Hi, I'm Amanda Beard, seven-time medalist. I get my aquasphere gear at swimoutlet.com, the web's most popular swim shop. Check them out today. Welcome to the Morning Swim Show for Monday, October 10th, 2011. I'm your host, Peter Bush. In the Phoenix Monitor today, we'll talk to Brian Brown. He's the head coach of Hydro Swim Team in New York City. He just won the Developmental Coach of the Year Award from USA Swimming. Coach Brown joins us right now in the Phoenix Monitor from Manhattan. Coach, welcome back to the show. How are you? Great, Peter. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Last time you were on the show, you were with Asphalt Green Aquatics there in Manhattan. Now you've started a new club. How's it going? And it's going well. It's been a challenge to uh, start up in this environment, but we've had a lot of fun uh, with the small group that we've got, and we're excited about it. I know facilities and location are a bit of an issue in a city as crowded as Manhattan. Not a lot of space for aquatics. Uh, where are you guys located and what kind of pool do you have? Uh, well, we operate out of three different pools in the city. Um, uh, Lehman College in the Bronx, uh, the Flushing Meadows uh, Pool in Queens, and uh, the uh, Sports Park Pool at Roosevelt Island. Very cool. So which are, do you kind of rotate around to the different facilities? Yes, that's exactly what I do. I, I move around quite a bit. Um, we have a little bit of space here and there at each of those facilities, um, but they've all opened their doors and been very welcoming to us. Do you find that uh, swimming is catching on, so to speak, in Manhattan? Um, uh, I think, I think swimming in general is catching on because, um, it's becoming a more high profile sport. Um, it seems to me that people pay attention to it more than just, uh, every four years. And with the, uh, population base that we have here in the city, you know, it's just in general, there's more people that are involved. Um, I, I think it's exciting here in the city. Before I talk about some of the new swimmers you have, as we mentioned, you were with Asphalt Green, and you won this award from USA Swimming Developmental Coach of the Year, in part because you put three swimmers on the national junior team, including Lee and Neal, who we're all starting to talk about a little bit more uh, as next year approaches. You think she can make the Olympic team? Absolutely. Um, she has, in my mind, everything that it takes to make it. Uh, she's got the natural ability, and uh, she's got the maturity level now where I think um, she's got a good shot. You know, everything has to come together, but um, I'm hopeful that it will. What a terrific story she's becoming. Yeah, she's a wonderful kid, and uh, it's a wonderful story of, uh, of how she's got involved in swimming and, um, you know, the, the work that's been done uh, in order to provide her opportunity to swim. Uh, it, it was always a pleasure to work with Leah. How about some of the swimmers you have now? Uh, we've got um, uh, a couple of uh, postgrads that are swimming with me right now that are going to be at the trials. Um, both of them have been uh, uh, finalists at seniors or, or semi-finalists at senior nationals. So we're excited about that. And then we've got uh, another young lady um, who uh, came with me from Asphalt Green who was uh, um, top eight in the mile at junior nationals, Daniela Rueda. And she's competed internationally um, for uh, Columbia. So it's, it's an exciting experience for me to have, you know, new things to, uh, to deal with and new challenges. Tell us about Daniela a little bit. Uh, well, she's a wonderful kid. She works very hard. Um, we swim seven days a week. In general, we do doubles uh, almost every day. And she's the kind of athlete that never misses anything. So um, it's really a pleasure to work with uh, such a, a dedicated young athlete. Um, I think she really makes the most out of, her, out of herself. And, um, you know, it shows in the, um, the results that she's gotten and the, um, just the approach that she has. It's, it's a pleasure to work with. Seven days a week, doubles almost every day? Yes. How old is yeah, she? It's, she's, um, she's 17. She's going to be a senior. Or she is a senior. Do you risk burning her out with that kind of workload? Um, I don't think so. I think that uh, what burns kids out generally is, is a lack of improvement. And um, some kids need more than others in order to continue to improve. Um, she's uh, not your, you know, a, a, your, the largest athlete that you've ever seen, and yet she has to compete with kids that are big and strong. And, and basically her uh, strength, in my mind, is her ability to work and her work ethic. And it's not like these are mandatory practices. I um, 
offer uh, a full slate of practices and they take advantage of it. It's it's uh, and if she needs a day off, she needs a day off. Um, that's kind of the way I operate now. It's not um, nothing is mandatory. I always say excellence is is optional. You choose to be good. So you hold practices seven days a week, two times a day, and then leave it up to them. There's got to be some discussion though between swimmer and coach as to what you believe they need to succeed. Sure, there is. Um, in her case, you know, we would say eight practices is sort of the minimum. I, I kind of believe that uh, whatever age you are, if you divide that in half, that's about how many practices you need to be doing per week so that there's a progression over your career. Now, some people are, that's a, that's a median level. Some people are a little bit above that. Some people are a little bit below that. But I think it's a good mark to shoot for when you're assessing how much does an athlete need to swim. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like that's, yeah, every coach has their own style. There's no doubt about it. I feel like most coaches these days are going towards a more, you know, less yardage, high intensity, kind of a Dave Salo type of approach. Are you, do you do a lot of technique stuff as well, or is it just, hey, whatever we need to do to work on yardage to, to get it in? Uh, we we uh, hit all of bases. We work on speed and technique and endurance and power. Um, and uh, in, agreed that most people are moving in sort of a less is more uh, direction. In my mind, that's a that's a aesthetic principle, not an athletic principle. And um, I think honestly, uh, that favors the most talented athletes. Um, if you don't have the most talented athletes, I think you have to do something to compete with them. And sometimes you can work harder than them to even the uh, playing field. Hmm. Do you find that works? So that's the model you have for younger swimmers, older swimmers, everybody, no matter the age? Um, as far as the number of practices, you mean? Yeah. Intent um, I think, yes, I think it's from the age 12 on, basically, um, that, that sort of rule of thumb would work. Just because it provides a progression as they get older. Um, the practices might be shorter, but swimming that often, I think, is, is a good idea. I remember years ago, John Leonard saying that uh, he recommended eight, you know, eight and unders swim, you know, twice a week, and that basically he has reversed his position on that because kids are not as active as they used to be when they were, uh, you know, when he wrote that 20, 30 years ago, and he thinks they ought to swim maybe four times a week now. Um, I, I kind of think the same thing. I have a, I have a nine-year-old myself, and uh, I like him to swim at least three times a week, uh, just because I think it's, it's uh, the right way to approach it. And um, if you read about the, you know, the 10,000 hours that's necessary to achieve your potential over time, you know, you, somehow you've got to get those hours in. And uh, I really believe in that. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, what are meets like in the Northeast? You know, it's not a swimming hub. We've talked about that before. It's not California. It's not Texas or Florida. Uh, it's not even like Atlanta or Phoenix, for that matter. But the potential is obviously great with the amount of people. But, I mean, do you get enthusiasm for swim meets and for, you know, kind of swim activities around there? Uh, yeah. I, I, we run some fantastic meets here in the Northeast. Um, it's a lot of people are interested. You know, it's a, the, your options uh, during the winter are limited as far as sports go, and, and swimming fills that. Um, so you have a lot of people that are interested in swimming. The, the real difficulty about meets and swimming in general in, in the Northeast is the cost of facilities. Um, you, a lot of people are running very large, very long meets simply to pay the bills. Um, they have to rent the pool to run the meet and or they have to meet their budget by running the meets. So it's hard to find a really high quality meet in the Northeast. Now there are a few people that are doing that. Jim Wood runs a wonderful meet in January that's it's not about making money it's a long course meet that's about um, the highest quality swimming that you can have so but that's a little bit of a rarity that's a challenge that I see in the Northeast yeah I just asked because it's the, probably the greatest growth potential in the country because of the amount of people living in, in that area but I know that there are some logistical challenges but if USA swimming could figure out a way to make more inroads with swimming in the Northeast it would expand the base tremendously. Definitely, definitely. There's, but it's, there's such, it's such a competition for resources that you know, each individual coach and each individual club is sort of fighting that battle on their own to secure pool time, to secure um, stable time and, and at a reasonable rate. 
that makes it it makes it difficult. It is definitely a challenge when you look at what people are faced with in the rest of the country. Um, I mean, everybody has their challenges, but um, I, if USA Swimming could somehow develop a role that would that would help, um, I, you know, teams everywhere and make sure they have secure facilities and secure pool time, it certainly would help with the growth. Well, Coach, good luck with the new club. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Peter. I appreciate it. All right, that's Brian Brown joining us from New York City, head coach of the Hydro Swim Club. That's it for today's show. I'm Peter Bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.